What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. Now this is just going to be a quick little video that I'm making just out of the blue. I've had a lot of people ask me about my NVIDIA settings video and that um, there were a ton of people who were concerned that these settings were not the most up-to-date settings and well you'd be right. Um, there were a lot of new settings released that I'm going to show you today. In fact a lot of them are actually NVIDIA recommended settings and they are no longer the ones that I have said in my previous videos. I'm going to be putting a disclaimer on that video and linking to this video. So if you're coming from that video, uh, I thank you for not watching that video because it is now out of date. Now, what settings should you be using inside of uh, the current year? So I'll open up my NVIDIA control panel here. Number one is just make sure that you are on the latest NVIDIA driver. The easiest way to do that is to open up your control panel and just see um, what driver you're on. So. As of recording this video, uh, 531.41 is the latest driver. And I can tell you already that this is a bone stock driver install. I have changed nothing. This is not even a debloated driver. It is just your regular average uh, NVIDIA driver. And I installed it using the NVIDIA driver package right here. So this is the NVIDIA driver package and I just installed it using that. And uh, if you're not on the latest driver, please just make sure you're on the latest driver because <laughs> You may not have some of these features if you're not on the latest drivers. So out of the box, it usually says, uh, let the 3d application decide. Now in most scenario and cases, a lot of people are not going to notice a difference, uh, from the stock Nvidia settings because they actually do a pretty good job on, uh, at least modern graphics cards anyway. Um, but if you're on an older graphics card like me and the easiest way to check this is to just go to your task manager. So your task manager, won't look like this when you open it, it'll look like this. Just click on uh, more details and open it and then go to performance and then scroll down to where it says GPU. Now you may see something in here like Intel HD graphics or maybe AMD Radeon graphics and then your graphics card. That's only if you're on a laptop. But as you can see here, I am on a GTX 1660. I have been a proud 1660 owner since 2019 as I have not been on the train of uh, recent NVIDIA cards and I like to stay with my 1660 because I feel like it's all I need. I don't need any of that fancy mumbo jumbo and I can still play all the games that I want. Anyways, that's not really that important. So once you figure out what graphics card you have, uh, you can follow these guides. So if you are on a 20 series card and newer, you can use these settings. So leave everything here in default and the only things that you should be changing are the low latency mode and set this to on now if you're on a laptop unfortunately the only setting you're going to have is ultra and there's not really any way to change that unless you do some like hacky stuff but ultra is fine because you're on a laptop so just whatever just make sure this low latency mode is on and then if you have a g-sync compatible monitor i would actually recommend leaving this on now I used to say that G-Sync kind of was bad, but um, I'll get into why in a later video about why G-Sync is actually good and I'll be explaining the benefits about it. But if you already know the benefits, then just go ahead and leave it on. And as for all these settings down here, it's a common misconception that um, you have to change everything to the maximum performance settings. So like, uh, oh, go here, prefer maximum performance, prefer performance. Well, um, in the modern day and age, that is uh, completely invalid and irrelevant. In fact, um, setting this to prefer maximum performance on a modern graphics card may actually cause more issues than uh, no issues. Um, as proven by my friend who decided to follow an NVIDIA settings video and he had a 40 series card and all of a sudden out of nowhere, uh, his system was just randomly shutting off. And that is because um, he put everything on prefer maximum performance and he only had like a 850 watt power supply. and. <laughs> He did not have enough power. So then of course we upgraded the power supply, but I also told him that you should probably run optimal power instead of prefer maximum performance. And then not only was his performance better, but um, it was just generally more consistent. So my recommendation is for the power management settings. Um, if you have an older Nvidia graphics card like mine, uh, setting this to prefer maximum performance will actually help your performance. Um, but if you're on a newer Nvidia card, like I'd say 30 series and newer, uh, then just leave this on optimal power. There's really no reason to change this from optimal power if you're on a 30 or 40 series card. Um, I guess if you're crazy, then you could set this to prefer maximum performance, but there really is not a reason to change that from optimal. Guys, optimal power 
it may seem like it's not working and that it may be like a really bad thing because you're just like giving away performance for power saving features. But let me tell you this, Nvidia's official claims say that optimal power makes sure that the GPU is optimally operating in its optimal power range. So essentially, if you're confused by that sentence, which I mean, I didn't say it in the greatest fashion, but essentially what optimal power does is it tells your graphics card what it can do. Basically, the driver figures out what your graphics card and what its capabilities are and optimal power will give it the optimal power so that you won't run into any issues. And that is the reason why it is the default setting in the control panel. But if you set this to prefer maximum performance, it will just always stay at the most maximum performance P-State. And that's not a bad thing, I guess, if you really care about performance and you're just like not really chasing anything in this video, but um, just leave it on optimal power. All right, moving along down here. So shader cache size, um, most of you probably just leave this on driver default. There's no real reason to change it. Although I have noticed that setting this to 10 gig or higher actually reduces stutters, especially if you're on a lower end graphics card. I recommend setting this to 10 gigabyte or unlimited. Now, 10 gigabyte is the safe option if you don't have that much space on your computer. So the easiest way to check that is just go to your file explorer, click on this PC, and then just see how much space you have available. Because if you set the shader cache size to unlimited, it never deletes the cache. So that way, it will keep all your shaders cached forever, basically, until you reinstall the driver. So um, for most of you, probably 10 gigabyte is the safe option, but if you don't really care and you have like all the space in the world or like a petabyte like Linus Tech Tips, then go ahead and set it to unlimited. But for most of you, either just leave it on driver default. So this is the setting that a lot of people have been controversial about. So essentially um, texture filter and quality, all it really does is um, make the textures look better. I mean, that's really all it does. I mean, it's set to quality by default, but if you set this to high performance, it makes all the textures look blocky, apparently, according to some people. But a common misconception as well is that setting this to high performance will actually give you more performance when, in fact, it will not give you more performance. It will give you less performance. So if you want, set this to performance, but do not set it to high performance. You will be losing performance if you set it to high performance. I don't understand why, but for some reason, they, Nvidia just made that mistake. But trust me, performance always better than high performance. Just don't use high performance. Use either quality or performance. In my case, I use performance. As for like vertical sync settings and other stuff like that, I just leave it on use the 3D setting because there's no real reason to change that unless you are having trouble and or the application is v-syncing without your consent or not wanting to v-sync and especially if you are running a g-sync or free sync compatible monitor like i am you have to leave that setting on or otherwise you will not get the benefits of g-sync a lot of people get that confused or they don't change that and then there's issues so that's that's really about it you don't really need to change anything else apart from low latency mode just make sure that that's set to on or ultra if you're on a laptop and then uh Power management mode, that's really about it. You just either choose optimal if you're on a newer graphics card, 30 series or newer. If you're on an older graphics card, just do prefer maximum performance and uh, call it a day. You don't really need to change anything else. Now, here's the next setting. So inside of the desktop size and position, there is some new settings. So in previous videos, and especially my previous NVIDIA video, I um, told you to use display scaling and no scaling. Well, this has actually changed quite a significant amount since the last video and uh, me going to NVIDIA forums and talking to NVIDIA, I can tell you right now that this is incorrect. So display scaling is what it is by default. It's just like the best compatibility layer for when you're using your computer and uh, moving stuff around and like playing games and stuff. It's the best for compatibility so that if you're changing resolutions and stuff like that, it doesn't muck up anything because the display knows what resolutions it can handle. But it's also the old fashioned way of rendering. The new way is full screen and GPU scaling and then also check marking the override setting. Now, do not do this on any of your secondary monitors. Uh, just leave them at display. Only the one that has G-Sync and or is your main monitor. Just set this to full screen, GPU, and then override and then hit apply. Your screen will turn black for a second and then you will see this cop up here. Just hit yes. 
and then try moving your mouse around. It should feel a lot more responsive. Trust me, it will feel much more responsive and you will not regret changing that setting at all. All right, so that's pretty much it for the NVIDIA control panel. You really don't have to muck around with anything. This is optional, so if you go to change resolution, just make sure that you're running the most up-to-date resolution because a lot of people here just leave it on whatever NVIDIA control panel does by default. If you have owned a 144 hertz monitor or a 240 hertz monitor, you probably haven't been running it at 240 hertz or 144 hertz. So the easiest way to check is in your NVIDIA control panel, just go down here and then switch it to PC and then just make sure that you're running the most up-to-date resolution and then hit yes. Now you're on the most up-to-date refresh rate for your monitor and basically before it was running at 60, now it's running at 144. So that's just a common mistake. And if you don't have NVIDIA control panel and you're still watching this video anyway, which I don't understand why you would be, another easy way is to just go to your settings here, go to system and then scroll down to the advanced display settings and then check your refresh rate. Now, by default, probably set at 60, change it to your maximum refresh rate, hit apply, another prompt will come up, you just click yes, and then let it change, and you'll be done. And then another thing too that a lot of people don't know about is the NVIDIA color settings. So by default, your monitor is going to be set to limited, or a lot of them are gonna be set to limited because that's how you get the um, lowest input latency, but I found in testing that this is not really the case because if you want color accuracy, which is immaculately more important to me, especially when I'm working on thumbnails and videos and like other things and etc., cetera, I, uh, I like to have my color accuracy. So I go ahead and set my color range to full. And then I set here on my other monitors, the color range to full as well. So it's just, just optional. You do not need to do this, but it does make your displays look a lot nicer and and um, if you didn't notice the difference before, uh, just turn it off, look at your monitors, and then uh, turn it back on again and look at them. And particularly pay attention to your taskbar, especially if, if you have the dark theme on. You will notice that the darks will become a lot darker. And it even displays a little thing down here that says right here. So the limited is the most commonly used by televisions. <laughs> And the full is allows for the most detail in darks and white areas. So that is why I set mine to the full color range because it makes a huge difference. Now, for those of you laptop users out there, there's actually one more setting you can do. So I know some people have a lot of trouble with battery life on their computers. So inside of the NVIDIA control panel, just click on display GPU activity icon and notification area. So now, you can see everything that's using your GPU. Now, of course, I'm on a desktop, so it's going to say that it's using my GPU. But since you have a laptop and you probably have dual graphics, this is actually very handy because you can see what apps are using your GPU without having to open Task Manager. And it's uh, actually something I use on my own laptop because I was having battery life issues. And then I found out about that and I was just amazed at the stuff in the background that was using my GPU. Now, these next things are just optional. You do not necessarily have to apply these. These are just things um, that I do to help my performance a little bit more on my aging graphics card. So you can download this little utility called MSI underscore util v3. I've talked about it in my older videos, but um, this is a utility that is very well used, especially in the overclocking community. It really helps, especially on older graphics cards. So what you want to do is just right click on this app and run it as administrator do not worry this is not a virus it shows up here and all you want to do is look for your graphics card and see if the msi mode is check marked on it uh, if it's not check marked go ahead and check mark it and then do not change the priority now i've seen tons of youtubers who have said change this priority to high so you get the best performance with your graphics card. Well, that is actually not the case and you should not be changing that. In fact, you should be leaving it to unidentified because that is what the driver has by default. And this is what Windows likes. If you change this too high, you may run into issues with encoding overloads or some other stuff like that. And it's just generally not a great thing. So I just recommend leaving this on unidentified if you don't know what it means or undefined rather. Now, once you've done that, you can exit this, and then we're gonna open up another application called NVIDIA Profile Inspector. Again, these are all optional. You do not have to watch the rest of this video. You have found the most up-to-date NVIDIA settings that you can use for your performance. These are just optional. So it's gonna look a little overwhelming at first, but if you scroll down a bit, you're gonna notice there's some settings here. 
So if you're on a modern graphics card, 20 series and newer, you can enable a feature called rebar. So all you have to do is just select this one that has all of the games in the list. And then second thing here as well, all of the games in the list. And then same thing, all of the games in the list. And then hit apply. So rebar, even on a graphics card that doesn't support rebar for some reason, does help performance i do not understand why but it's there it's a feature you can enable i don't know why it's not enabled by default in the driver but it is um in here so you can enable it this way the next setting is completely optional but it will reduce your usage just a little bit so nvidia predefined i don't know how to say that but uh ancel usage or n ar arsenal or i don't know it's 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 a thing and you just hit this and change it to disallowed. All this does is it just makes it so that um, the stuff doesn't like do Nvidia stuff and you get less resource usage. So like my Nvidia container is only using 72 megabyte, but if you have GeForce experience installed, you might not want to change this setting. You might, you might just want to leave this on allowed because I've heard of people who have had GeForce experience issues and, uh, Changing this to um, disallowed caused issues, but those are really all you change in here. Just don't muck with any of these other settings. Just rebar enabled and then NVIDIA Arsenal usage disallowed or whatever the heck that is. I don't know. Just disallowed. It works. I don't know why. And that's about it, guys. There's really nothing else you need to do to tune your NVIDIA graphics card. That's really it. Man, that's a lot more simple than it used to be, right? It's crazy. So if you liked this video, um, please consider leaving a like on the video and subscribing to my channel. I do not post as frequently as I used to, but I will plan to make a lot more videos. So with that, I'll see you guys next time.